wrapping up a busy week here at the International Space Station Flight Control Room where Flight Director Royce Renfrew is leading the Orbit 2 team of Space Station Flight Controllers. They're watching over the Space Station systems while the crew, now newly expanded from six members, or two six members, uh, take some well-deserved rest after a long day yesterday. Following uh, the 9.28 p.m. Central Time Soyuz docking yesterday, the Expedition 35 crew now includes not only Commander Chris Hadfield of the Canadian Space Agency, NASA Flight Engineer Tom Mersh Marsh Marshburn, and Russian Flight Engineer Roman Romaninko, but also NASA Flight Engineer Chris Cassidy and Russian Flight Engineers Pavel Vinogradov and Alexander Misurkin. The entire crew is now orbiting about 253 miles above Thailand, heading northeast over Laos and uh, then China. Cassidy Vinogradov and Misurkin launch in docking yesterday makes them the first crew to have ever launched and docked in a single day. The la they launched in their uh, Soyuz TMA-08M from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan at 3.43 p.m. Central Time. And rather than taking the usual, usual two-day trip to catch up with the space station, they docked to it less than six hours later at 9.28 p.m. Central. By 11.35 p.m., the two crews had opened hatches between their vehicles and Hadfield, Marshburn, and Romaninko were welcoming their new crewmates. Marshburn, Hadfield, and Romaninko launched to the space station on December 19th in their Soyuz TMA-07M, which they then docked to the station's relevant module on December 21st. That puts them now in their 101st day in space and their 98th day on the space station. Cassidy, Vinogradov, and Mitsurkin, of course, haven't quite made it to the 24-hour mark yet on either their stay in space or their stay at the station. Yesterday's Soyuz arrival capped off an especially busy week on board the space station. The crew on Tuesday saw off the SpaceX Dragon capsule, which had been docked to the station's Harmony node since March 3rd when it arrived with 1,268 uh, 1, pounds of research, supplies, and experiments. It was released from the station at 5.56 a.m. Central Time on Tuesday and then sent back to Earth with 2,668 pounds of science samples and supplies to return to researchers here on the ground. It splashed down uh, safely in the Pacific Ocean and has already made it back to land. And in the midst of these two dynamic operations, the crew on orbit still have some time to put into a number of scientific investigations as well. Tom Marshburn and Chris Hadfield performed multiple sessions of the reaction self-test experiment over the course of the week. That is a five-minute reaction time task that allows crew members to monitor the daily effects of fatigue on their performance, particularly at times like these when their sleep schedule is shifting or disrupted. They have each been taking part in the test right before their sleep period begins, all week and occasionally when they wake up as well. In all, they aim to have performed 115 runs of the experiment by the end of their stay at the station. Hadfield spent some time with the viable experiment, or evaluation and monitoring of microbiofilms microbio uh, inside the International Space Station. That study looks at microbial biofilm development on space materials. And to help that process along, one of the crew's duties is to take the experiment bag out, touch the top of it, and blow into the bag once a month. Hadfield also worked on Monday with the BCAT experiment, or the Binary Colloidal Alloy Test, which studies the effects of phase separation on crystal growth. And on Wednesday, he spent some time setting up the new ISERV experiment. That stands for ISS Severe Environmental Research and Visualization System. That's an automated system designed to acquire images of the Earth's surface from the space station, both as a way to gain experience and expertise in automated photography from the station and to provide useful images for disaster monitoring and assessment, as well as environmental decision making. Tom Marshburn spent a good deal of his time on Wednesday participating in the energy experiment, which is aimed at measuring how much food is needed for astronauts during long-term space missions. 
His participation in that is still ongoing, and he'll continue to carefully log his food and water intake and take urine samples as well as, as, well as wear an armband that collects data for the experiment. But the bulk of the work was done on Wednesday when he spent several sessions in an oxygen mask to monitor his oxygen intake. And then on Thursday, he also spent some time with the seedling growth experiment, which studies how gravity affects the cellular mechanisms of plant response to life or phototrophism. Also looks at its effect on plant growth and proliferation under microgravity conditions. The crew is scheduled to rest and catch up on their sleep for the rest of the day. They'll get their next wake-up call at 1 a.m. Central Time on Saturday, but even then they'll have the weekend off for the most part with a, a little Soyuz transferred work scheduled on the uh, Russian side of the space station. But they'll be back to work on Monday with now a full crew of six astronauts to share the load. That's what's been going on in space this week, and this is Mission Control Houston.